being totally healed involves more than just your physical body. Find out more on today's Fixing the Money Thing. Now, it's good to pray about a problem to get direction, to hear God's voice, to get the plan, but eventually you've got to step out of the boat. Eventually it comes to a place you have to deal with it. What I'm telling you today is that you need to know how to get things done. Gary uncovers God's plan for healing your finances, spirit, mind, and emotions. Totally Healed, today on Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the Money Thing. From Faith Life Church, Gary Cassie, and how long are you going to put up with it? I want to just help you understand something that I think is important that you take with you into this season. Uh, years ago, we launched the church, and you know, you're stepping into something you don't really know how to do that well, and it's all new, and so you can get overwhelmed. I remember I was overwhelmed at some decisions back in that day, and I had a dream the Lord gave me, and in this dream, I had opened a closet, and it's one of those like uh, closet sets has the shelves on both sides. It's clear, you know, shelves all the way around it. Uh, the issue was all the stuff that's supposed to be on the shelves was piled up on the floor, and the shelves were empty. It was a mess. And uh, so in my dream, the Lord said, speak to it and tell it to go back in place. And so I said, in the name of Jesus, get back in place. And you ever seen Mary Poppins clean house? <laughs> it was like that. It all went, whoop, right back on the shelves, and there was peace. And, of course, I knew what the Lord was telling me. He was telling me that, Pastor, you need to use the authority I've given you to, to deal with this situation and bring peace to it. I remember earlier this year I had a dream similar in the, in, the, in the message, but I was praying for someone in this dream, and I was praying very loudly with authority, and uh, they were healed. And, of course, the Lord was reminding me again, uh, use the authority that I've given you, and uh, it'll bring answers, and it'll bring peace. And so I want to remind you that in both those dreams, God was telling me about taking authority. And I want to remind you today is the same. So Matthew 18, 18 is a scripture. Let's look at that. Jesus says, truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Heaven backs it up. And whatever you loose on earth, heaven backs it up. But notice it says you. I could title this message, how long are you going to put up with it? I could. Now, you know, you can put up with dirty closets, you can put up with things, and I think sometimes we put up with things too long, and we need to deal with it. Mark chapter 16, 15, Jesus telling them, uh, verse 17, these signs will accompany those who believe in my name, they, not God, they, you, will drive out demons. You will speak in new tongues. You'll pick up snakes with your hands. And when you drink deadly poison, it'll not hurt you. And when you place your hands on sick people, they'll get well. Now, he's not referring to literal snakes. He's talking about waiting. You, you live in the kingdom of light, but you're in the earth realm where the kingdom of darkness is. He's saying, don't you be afraid to step into that situation fearful. You take my anointing, you take my authority, and it shall not harm you. He's trying to help you understand that. But notice in both these scriptures, you're the one that has to do it. You got that? You're the one that has to do it. And so I'm convinced, I've seen it for so long, so many Christians are praying about their problem. Now, it's good to pray about a problem to get direction, to hear God's voice, to get the plan, but eventually you've got to step out of the boat. Eventually it comes to a place you have to deal with it. Procrastination will not fix the problem, it just makes it worse. And you'll have to deal with it not with human wisdom, you're going to have to deal with it with spiritual authority. And the enemy will play you for a, a flute, he'll play you like a musical instrument if you don't know how, how to deal with, with him. And the Bible says you have an enemy, and you need to recognize that, and you need to know how to handle him, and the lies he tries to get you to believe, right? 
You know, binding and loosing is part of your life. And you need to understand it. Now, for myself, I had to learn the authority that I had. I grew up, of course, in church. Never heard, never heard, heard one message about authority. Never heard one message about de- demonic warfare. Never had one message. Give. I don't remember any time ever talking about it. And, you know, you can teach salvation every day. But, you know, once you're born again, what happens after that? You've got to learn how to live this life. Now, you know, when you're born again, you come into his kingdom, but you have an assignment and you're in the earth realm and you got to learn how the kingdom operates to get it done. And so praise God for the salvation message. We come to Christ, we call the name of Jesus, but once you're in the kingdom, man, you're in the army and you have an enemy and you've got to learn how to handle it. So I, I got sick, um, financial stress all those years and sales and things going bad. The financial stress had an impact on my body. And so one day I woke up, you know, paralyzed, just Went to bed normal, woke up in the morning, couldn't get out of bed. The arm was paralyzed, just my face numb, everything was numb, I couldn't, couldn't function. And uh, I knew I was in trouble. I mean, this was a scary moment. And uh, I had to have answers. Now, I knew God was my answer. The Bible says the demons know they're God and they tremble. I mean, knowing there is a God, it, it, that's part of the answer, but that's the very beginning of the answer. You got to know God, but more importantly, you got to know who you are in Christ. And you got to know what He gave you in Christ. Because now it's you. The Bible says what you bind. If you don't bind it, God can't. You're in the earth realm. And so I began to pray about this situation. I went to doctors. They said, you know, we don't know if you're going to live or die. Uh, they had no answers. They had, they had names for different things. Uh, one doctor said, well, it would be interesting to see how this progresses. You know, there's not a lot of encouragement out there, right? It's just like, you know, we'll just watch and see what happens. And so that was uh, kind of discouraging for me. But I began to study the word of God, and I knew God was my answer. I knew that he healed. Now, listen, you can know God does things, but you got to know he does things <laughs> for you. Let me say it again. You can know God does things, but you got to know he does things for you. You know, there's a difference. You know, you can see these videos, and we tell stories in here every Sunday. That's fantastic, but you got to know that's you in that story. You got to know how that story happened. You got to, you need to know how to step into that story because there's laws that operate in the kingdom. You have to know. All right. So I was learning and, uh, I, I was desperately sick. I mean, it was, it was, it was horrible. It was desperately sick. I was having panic attacks. My, my whole body was just whacked out. And uh, the, at the church I was going to one Wednesday night, I mean, I was doing fine driving to church, but when I got in that auditorium, man, all of a sudden I felt deathly sick. And I didn't know what to do. Uh, I was desperate. I'd been fighting this thing for a few weeks. And so in the middle of the service, I mean, I was desperate. Craig, were you there? I mean, I was, I was desperate. You, ever been, you know, I don't know if you were told you're going to live or die. I mean, there's a, there's a place in life that you better know what you believe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, there are, you know, the day of trouble. There's, there's going to be a re- evil. Re- there's gonna be, you need to know what you believe and uh, what you believe will show up in that moment. Well, I'll tell you this. I wasn't strong what I believed at that moment. I'd heard, I'd heard a lot. I'd seen things. But I wasn't confident in who I was. I didn't know who I was totally. And so I went to church. So I got up middle service. And I, went for, I, just, I, I didn't know what to do. I had to have prayer. I mean, I felt like I was dying. And so I got up, and of course, all the security guys, they come running, you know, and who's this guy? But uh, one of the pastors there knew who I was, and uh, motioned to the senior pastor, uh, this guy's okay, I know who he is. And so, I mean, he walked over to me, and he goes, he just stopped there for a second, and he goes, well, I know what's wrong with you, you got a spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus, he bound that thing, and I, I was, I, the power of God hit me, and I was instantly normal. I felt completely free for the first time in weeks. I was so excited about that. Uh, after church, I uh, went out to the pizza shop, and I can still remember the moment at that pizza shop. I could hear the, the music playing and eating the pizza, and all of a sudden, that yucky presence feeling came back on me. And yeah, have you ever heard someone say, I thought God healed me? I thought, get, I thought God did that. You ever heard people say, oh, well, I thought God... I had no clue what was happening. I didn't understand it was, de- it was a demonic presence at that time. I didn't understand what my battle was against. 
But several weeks later, as I was praying, now I'm digging, man. I mean, I'm digging in the word. I'm digging. I'm trying to find out how to deal with this thing. A few weeks later, I'm praying in the spirit, and I, I decide just to sit there a while and just pray it out. You know, I just go pray for it longer than I normally do. And as I was praying, all of a sudden, that thing lifted again. Now I had a clue. This is not a disease. This is a spiritual issue. This thing reacts to spiritual things. My pastor rebuked it at left. I'm praying in the spirit at left. And I'm getting clues that it wasn't a name, it was an it. It's a spiritual problem. And so at the time, and I've told people this at the time, of course, I didn't have a lot of training in uh, warfare, demonic you know, warfare. I'd seen demons before in, in my life. You know, I went to a spirit-filled church. But uh, a book by Norval Hayes, Norval Hayes, how many have actually heard Norval preach? Quite a few of you. And uh, one thing about Norval, he'd, he'd like to deal with those demons. And he had a book called Know Your Enemy. And I made it a purpose to, I don't know, if, I think it's still in the bookstore, but you can get it online. But I, I told the bookstores, I said, you always, always keep that book in our bookstore because uh, at that season, I would read that thing and saw how Norval took authority over these spirits. And I would just study that. And I'd get the Bible out. I was still very weak. Still very weak. I was, I was still not in faith, you know, devil-busting faith. I was still struggling, but I was getting stronger. And uh, I began to follow the Lord. And uh, eventually I got strong enough. Of course, I've told you the story when the demon left. And uh, it's in my CDs and things. But God taught me how to use my authority. And I was healed. And I'm fine and have been fine ever since. But it was, I had to use my authority. I had to use the name of Jesus. I had to know what was happening. And so will you. And so what I'm telling you today is that you need to know how to get things done. I believe a lot of people are praying about it. They're praying about it. You will not find Jesus one time in the New Testament praying to God to do anything. In fact, in his hometown, they said they were amazed because he spoke as someone who had authority. Amen. Not about God. He was doing the works of God. There's a difference. And so, you know, people pray, and praying's good. But I'm telling you that you need to know, understand how this thing operates. You need to step into your authority. Now, Norval wrote another book, which we do have in the bookstore, called How to Live and Not Die. And I'm going to quote a paragraph out of his book uh, just as illustration, I'm reading from his book now. One Sunday night, I was praying for my daughter, asking God to heal her of over 30 growths all over her body. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the room. He looked at me and said, I listened to what he said, how long are you going to put up with those growths on your daughter's body? What do you mean, Lord, he said. Jesus said, you're the head of your house, be the head of your house. But how was I supposed to make those growths disappear, he said. He said, the church I came from never taught us anything about that. Jesus said to him, you are the head of your house. If you'll curse those growths in my name, they'll die, they'll disappear. If you'll believe and not doubt, they'll die like the fig tree did that I cursed. Listen to this. For three years, I had been praying for those growths to disappear, and yet they're still there. Listen carefully to what we're saying. In Jesus' name, he said, you must die. You're in my house, meaning you're under my authority, you must die. After saying this for 30 days, nothing changed. They got worse. But I kept on, and after 40 days, the power of God came into my house. That afternoon, my daughter came home from high school, went back to her bedroom. I heard a scream. She comes running out, and she said, look, Dad, the growths are gone. She went on to explain that she was hanging her clothes up. She hung one piece of uh, clothing item up, and the growths were there. She went back to grab another one and put her to hang that one up, and it, it, it was all gone. She never felt a thing. All the growths were instantly gone, and uh, she screamed, ran out, and was healed. Now, this is the kind of thing I read when I was bound. I was fighting this thing, and I was reading this thing. I said, wait a minute. You know, it's like, I, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was praying, 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 right? You may be praying, 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 but friend, you need to exercise authority. You have the keys of the kingdom. It's like someone praying for a car when they got the keys in their pocket to a Corvette in their driveway. You already got it. The demon doesn't have any authority over you. The devil can't take you down. You have been given life. You have authority. 
but you have to know how to use it. 